Hello friends, it's Sandy with another in the Holy Week series, and this one stems pretty directly from the meditation. And in this one, part of it says, a game of political chess ensues between Pilate and the Sanhedrin, neither realizing that they are pawns, not kings. And then a little later, the triune God has the council, Pilate, and Satan where he wants them. They would have no authority over the sun at all unless it had been given them from above. Fallen Jews, Gentiles, and spiritual powers unwittingly collaborate in executing the only death that could possibly grant the guilty life. Checkmate. And this really awoke to me. And I don't know. I mean, every time God opens my eyes, he awakens my mind to understanding that this was part of his plan. It it boggles my mind because if I were making the plan, it would not include death on a cross. That just seems like there's got to be a better way. There isn't. We know that. I know that. I've read that throughout scripture. And yet it always throws me when I read so clearly that this was part of the plan. And the chess image really stuck in my mind from this. And I thought I wanted to put that in my Bible. So I started drawing chess figures. I sketched them out on a piece of scratch paper first. And I'm just making weird shapes. You don't have to worry about making them look really chess-like, aside from making a whole bunch of them that have fatter bases and then fun things on top. Like I'm going to draw a little horse shape kind of thing back here, but keeping it really simple, making them different heights. And I'm making the bottoms of each one of them stand at a different place. And you'll see when I paint them in later that they look like they're back in the distance because of that. And of course, I got my watercolors out because I love watercoloring in my Bible. And I'm going to paint around the white one. I wanted the Jesus figure to be white and everything else to recede. So I'm just painting right over top of the other figures that are going to be in this picture. And if you wanted to try this and you just want to fade that red out to a white color and not do anything else on it, you could just take a baby wipe while it's still wet and wipe that off and it will generally lighten them the edges so that they're not going to end up having a hard edge. You could also just put some washi tape down and tape that off so that you just have a strip of color down the side. And I'm going to add more to mine, but at least softening it now means I don't end up with a hard line. Normally I would turn my Bible around to paint this other side because it's awkward going off to the left for me since I'm right-handed. So the left side doesn't look as good as the right side. So feel free to turn your Bible around. You don't have to do as I do because I'm on camera and trying to keep it a little simpler. So I'm just going to fill in the rest of this. And then it's a matter of how much red you want on it. Do you want it really super heavy with the red paint or a little bit lighter? And I'm going to add a bit more because I didn't want it to go pink. I wanted it to definitely have that sort of bloody, bloody Friday, blood of Christ, um, sort of a look to it. You could, as I've said before, you could just draw in the lines in a pen around these shapes before you start painting. But then I don't like doing that because then I have to worry about, am I painting right up to the edge? And then if I mess up, then I get worried. If I add the lines later, it's a whole lot easier to deal with. I'm carrying my red all the way down to the bottom of the page and also decided I wanted to splash more of it out on the rest of the page. Because one thing I noticed, I had another page in this Bible where I have something that's very red. It's just the dripping of blood, uh, talking about the blood of Christ. And that page always stops me because there's so much red on it. And I thought this one I would like to stop me as well. So I'm making some splatters and you can make them as light or dark as you want. If you do it when it's wet, you can dab off some of that color so you don't end up with things you can't read underneath of it. I always like to be able to continually read the scriptures because this one is in my main study Bible, so I don't want to make it unreadable. But tapping my brush, make sure you have enough paint and enough water that it flicks off nicely and then just tap it on your finger to kind of spread that color out and splash it all over. And once all that is dry, I put a piece of computer paper over top and underneath so I could iron it 
and flatten it out some. Just a hot iron, but you know, 20, 30 seconds at the most. And then take the paper off and I have a smooth piece of paper that I can generally do a little writing on. Now, the iron doesn't get it completely perfect, but it gets it better than the wrinkly that it starts out as. So I'm good with that. And I'm just going around the outside edges of the shape. And I'm only going to outline this one. You can outline the others too, but I wanted to let them be background supporting characters as opposed to the hero of this scene, who is Jesus. I guess he's always the hero of the scene, isn't he? But I didn't want to give any more room and attention than necessary to those others. But here's where I can clean up those edges that I had painted in earlier. If you get a set of Micron pens, you may get one that has, and I didn't know mine had it when I bought it, but it has a chisel nib brush, or not, not brush, it's a chisel nib pen, I guess, in the number two size. So it kind of does this nice, heavier, thick, thin type of writing. And then I decided to um, switch back and forth between a regular pen. I didn't want Satan's name really big in my Bible, even though talking to Satan here is appropriate, telling him, you are done, buddy. And then I added a little bit of journaling to the bottom in my own words. And I always encourage doing a little bit of that so you remember what it was that God spoke to you while you were doing this page or what the reason was that you were responding to God's word in the way that you had. And when you look back at it later, it'll make sense. I'll be back tomorrow with another Bible journaling page and as well on Sunday on Resurrection Day, of course. If you'd like to read the PDF so you can get more of the idea of why I chose to do a chess piece on this one, it's in the doobly-doo down below, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.